Welcome everyone here to the Smash Sports Show right here on Smash FM. We're out here on the road in Melbourne's, Melbourne's inner suburbs because uh, let's go across to our friends uh, over in Gippsland. Of course, it's great to interview uh, our favourite team over there. Of course, that is Sal United who made it a three-peat in the Brown Hoser Cup as well as back-to-back uh, Women's League champions. And of course, we've got three very special guests on the show to tell us a bit about it. After all, so we've actually interviewed some of their teammates and coaches uh, there on Sunday. Thanks all three for joining us. No worries. Yeah. I'll get all three to introduce yourselves. And obviously for the players in particular, what position you played on the field? Uh, I'm Zoe. I'm a South United women's captain and I play on the wing or in the midfield. Uh, I'm Sally and I mainly play just up front, like either striker or on the wing. And I'm Romy, the assistant coach of the women's team. Quickly go through the league championship one um, because you won that with a round to go and also you got the cup in Churchill uh, on the final round. Tell us a bit about the second last game of the season. Um, which obviously you claimed that one at Godfrey uh, Ball and Reserve. Yeah, that was a Newbury Lawn match. Um, that was a team that was probably the first half of the year, the standout team for the first seven or eight weeks, I'd say. They were unblemished, leading goal scoring, doing everything sort of right. So that was a, a, a good um, good hit out. The, it went to script, obviously. We had uh, got the result that we were sort of looking for to try and sew up the league. Um, but they were quite a, you know, they, they've been there thereabouts the last couple of years. So that was a good game. The girls um, played well and probably could have won a bit more. But I think in the end it was 4-0 from memory. I think the, um, the that was like the game that we needed to win. I played Trailgan City, like technically we won the league, Trailgan City the week after, Rom. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, and then Chanel, um, who is a first-time player this season, a young, what, 15-year-old, yeah. um, never played soccer before in her life, and um, she scored her first goal in that game. So that was a pretty um, yeah, that was a great moment, moment for, for her, and I think the whole team really got behind her too. You got a hat-trick in that game too, Sal, didn't you? Four goals? Uh, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Your last home game, Sally. Yeah, I, I think so, yeah. How special was to win the title, the league championship I'm talking about, um, in front of your home crowd? I have to sit out of this one because I didn't play. I actually had an injury at the time, so <laughs> it was a bit different on the bench. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, look, from a, from a coach's perspective, it's always nice to have a, a bit more of the, the local sort of uh, diehard sales supporters there to, to experience it and to be a part of it. So that was definitely exciting. It, it obviously brings great joy to a club that's probably deprived of a lot of success in the senior ranks. So it was quite a, that, that's quite a, um, a satisfying kind of feeling from that perspective. But as a play, I guess Sally would have to be the one that would uh, be the best one to answer there. Um, yeah, no, it was, it was really good to play in front of, um, the home team. Well, no, the home, like, um, like everyone is just very supportive and it's nice to have a club that really gets behind the women's team. Last round of the season, uh, you had to go down to Churchill, um, you know, it was pretty much a dead rubber, uh, game. Um, but you got the cup at Churchill, which I think I presented by the person who is on the other cup, um, I believe, the Brown Hoser Cup, um, the person got, who presented the League Cup to you. How special was that, even though you couldn't really celebrate much considering it wasn't in front of your home crowd? Um, that one, that was the official. So that officially speaking, that was um, what happened. Given that we were the reigning league champions we might have still had the cup at home and still bought it out and celebrated the week before so we might have got <laughs> the gun a little bit so we just, we just get to share it a little bit with the, with the home crowd 
because only because of circumstances. So it was something that was still there and we were able to sort of get it out and, and, and share that moment. But from an official perspective, it was still nice to, I think it was a cracking winter's day. It was an awesome sort of thing. Um, yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was good to have it officially, but unofficially, I think we did get to share the moment. So we probably were a bit lucky there. So who got to hold the League Cup one first? Me. <laughs> I um I remember <laughs> yeah I was gonna say I remember walking into the chain into the club rooms and asking Laurel for the key to the the cap to the the room and saying look I think it's still there and so I was able to bring it out and officially hand it to the girls and say get around it. So Zoe, how <laughs> good was to hold the cup first after I, from the from the, uh, from the I was gonna say I wasn't there that day actually I was. <laughs> I was at a photo shoot, so that like <laughs> when it was officially on at Churchill, I um got the the cup then. So I guess that was a yeah officially presented. But that's all me and Maddie um at the same time. But it was actually really cool coming back um after the girls had like like Romy said the cup had been brought out and everyone was still hanging around after the senior men's game and it was really nice to see all the girls really getting getting behind each other and celebrating the the win which was really nice to see let's turn our attention to Bro, uh, the brown hoser cup um now i believe you were two nil down we have about six seven minutes to go in the game and then obviously the crazy thing that happened uh <laughs> kick three in the last six seven minutes to win the game uh how surreal I, think, was that? I was gonna say maddie scored the first goal in with about 25 minutes into the first half, second half, sorry. So we were like 2-1 down with six minutes to go. So, yeah, um, yeah. Was little good. Sally yeah. was the one that uh, changed that all for us in the last six minutes, which was incredible. <laughs> Sally, I've actually seen both your goals, the last two goals. They were absolutely incredible. Um, now, the last one was even more incredible than the second one. Uh, sorry, then the first one that you scored. Tell us about both of them and what was your thought process because it came within a minute of each other. Um, yeah, it was really, it happened really quick. Um, so like, yeah, Maddie just crossed it in. It was like the most perfect cross ever. And then I just, yeah, I just stuck my leg out and it just, it just went in. And then the second one, um, yeah, like I just got the ball and just ran with it. Really, I probably should have passed it to Zoe because Zoe was like wide open, like running <laughs> on the wing. So if I missed that, that would have been very bad. But um, luckily it went in, yeah, and just chipped the keeper. So I'm going to ask you, Sally, this question. It's about the last goal. And then I'm going to ask Zoe and Romy this um, the uh a little bit different question uh, about that last goal. So Sally, I'm going to start off with you first. Now, when I watched the footage, it seemed to me that you got had contact and then you just kicked it, even though you were, I think you were on your way down onto the ground uh, when you kicked it. Tell us about that. And when did you know you scored it? Um. So yeah, I, I got... It was sort of just a hip and shoulder and then I just, I kicked it and then, yeah, I was on the ground. And then I I didn't even see it go in really. I just sort of heard everybody screaming and then I was like, oh. And then I looked up and then the ball was in the back of the net and then like everyone was running towards me. And then, yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it was just crazy. Like I honestly, I kind of blacked out. Like it was just... <laughs> It was, yeah, it was very. But you seem to have double teamed or triple teamed uh, when when your, when the defenders came out to you. Is that how you saw it? Yeah, so, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, they kind of was double teamed uh, yeah, a bit, yeah. Um, but luckily I just, yeah, got around them and scored. Romy and Zoe, I need to ask you this. Um, when did you had a feeling that, that this goal could actually, you know, that ball could actually go in the goals as soon as it left Sally's um, boot? 
from my perspective, looking at it from side on, I'm standing on the the um the home team box, which was the goal end, the um the end that Sally scored on. I had a great view. So I think just before we get to that, I think Zoe's been very humble with the way she's responded to that. I think I thought it was a great jinking run and a lot of skill to be able to to do what she did and execute at her age in a in a clutch moment. Um, but as soon as she got within brushed off one defender who gave up on her and the other two that were going for her. As soon as she got to the stage where anywhere between 20, 25 yards, Sally's, even when I coached against Sally many years ago, you're always on high alert that she was always a chance to, to score. And she just hit it. It was just a delicate little chip into the wind and it was just enough. You know, the keeper was off her line and it was just, the rest is history. It was just an awesome, awesome um, execution. I guess it was kind of like, Sally was saying it it all happened very quickly. I mean, I guess I was making sure that I was in the right spot and, like, as Sally's running up and I'm kind of, yeah, like, I'm on the opposite side of the field to her at that point. And, like, once, like, Liliana put that through ball through to Sal and then kind of watching it happen, it wasn't really until it, went into the back of the net that it kind of sunk in for me. But I think as well, we had a fair few chances in the first half um, as well. And maybe it was that little bit of oh, horribly like doubt in terms of when you're in that last couple of minutes. And I know for myself, I was like, oh, we at least we can, you know, we're, we're going into extra time. That was where my brain was at. And we were so like quickly after Sally had scored that, equalizer that it happened yeah it was it was surreal so at the same time yeah it wasn't until it was in the back of the net that it actually registered in my brain like it looked fantastic from where I was but I don't know you always kind of until it gets into the back of the net when you're on the field you're like you, you just don't trust it until it happens if does that make sense yeah like you just don't want to assume that it's going in because then you know weirder things have happened and you think it's going and it doesn't. So I guess that was, yeah, my yeah experience. <laughs> so who got to hold that cup first? Romy and Maddie. I, don't, I think I can't remember actually, because I think this is a, because I'm not sure how, if you, if you've sort of been keeping an eye on things, will football Victoria actually run this league this season for the first time. So they actually gave a keepsake as well. I remember holding on to the keepsake, but I can't remember who held on to that one, to the to the perpetual, to the one that gets issued out every single year. I can't recall, but I I wasn't too far away from it. I know. Yeah. I know that Maddie might have. I think Maddie passed it to me after you got maybe you got the um football Victoria and Maddie got the brown here. Yeah. And then we couldn't figure out how to take a photo. Oh. <laughs> I was going to get to that. Yep. Oh God! Yeah, because there's also a championship sign as well, wasn't there? A champion yeah. sign as well for the first yeah. time, which was cool. That was very cool. Glad you mentioned that, Zoe, because um, I wish I asked the uh, the others I had at sale when I was down there uh, a couple of days ago. Um, so how cool was it? Number one to be the very first team to get both trophies. Um, obviously, which is the the one you have to give back, but also another set of trophies that you get to keep sake. How special was that to get that? And I'll get all you to answer this question. I just think that they should uh, backdate ones from last year too. <laughs> yeah. Um, look, from a, it was, it, it's an awesome concept. I, I highly endorse that. I think it's a really cool to have to keep something that you can look at and go, it's not something we've got to give back and we're just a, num a name on a plaque or a cup on the side of a plaque. Um, it's really good to have something as a keepsake. And really, this year for the club's 50th, it's probably been a really extra special sort of jubilee celebration to say we've got something at the senior ranks that is a, you know, a special year to commemorate that. So I don't think anyone will ever forget that. Well, this is my first year with Sale, so it was actually mm -hmm. nice to – it will be nice to go back there next, next year and see the cup, so – yeah, it'll be. It's nice that we actually get to, yeah, keep it. So, I appreciate that, Sally. Um, now I believe in speaking to uh your coach Maddie um uh, on Sunday that 
Uh, you're actually not a cell local. You are you came all the way from Bansdale, am I correct? Yeah. Yeah, from Bansdale. So, so I need to ask you this. Um, why did you decide to play for the reigning champs, who are now three-peat champions uh, in Brown Hose and obviously the League Cup? Um, and for the for Rummy and Zoe, how special is to have Sally? And did you did either you keep an eye on how she was going uh, over at Bansdale before she came over to Sale? Well, Bansdale didn't actually have a team this year, so like a lot of the girls just stopped playing, and like a couple went to uni. So, um, yeah, like that was, yeah, that's the only reason. Um, but yeah, I've kind of always. Like admired, say like I suppose like the players that play there, they're all like fantastic, and yeah, it's just a, a really good club to be a part of. Everyone's very, um, yeah, welcoming, and like it's just a nice environment to be around. So yeah. Uh, from my perspective, um, I've uh, during when I used to coach some of the Sally youth girls. We, came, we, we crossed paths with Sally, so we always knew she was a talent and she was always a hard player to mark up against and, and keep um, out of a game. She's always in the contest. But also we had a bond with Sally in the fact that Maddie and I had also coached her with um, representative sides as well. So it, when she certainly, she was welcomed with open arms and it wasn't like we're starting with a new sort of person that we didn't know anything about. So we'd already had a bit to do with Sally and we were really glad to see her wearing our colours for the year and as long as she wants. Yeah, I think having Sally were like not just on the field was an amazing addition to the team. I mean, like Sally is a very positive um, person and, you know, she, it was from, I guess, like a leadership point of view within the group, watching Sally kind of open up and like start cracking jokes and um, really starting to like her personality, like kind of that cheeky personality coming through in a way. But it was, it was really lovely just to get someone that aligned with the rest of our values and someone that you just, you know, you're happy to have around. And like even her mum, her mum's awesome and her dad too. And they're like it's just when you think about it as well, it's, she didn't just join the team, she joined the club and so did her family. And that's also a really special addition and something that I think not just everyone on the team but everyone in the club, I think that's our value. So it was, yeah, very lucky that we got an amazing player on the field but I guess, yeah, a family that um, was a great addition to the club on, as a whole. Either you get a chance to kiss on the four trophies that you got. I definitely drank out of the two ones that <laughs> you have to give back, but I don't think I've actually touched the new ones. I um I wouldn't say I I, I might have given it a um you know a manly hug, but that's probably about as distraction <laughs> as I got. Will <laughs> did you kiss the cup, Sal? Oh, um no. I think I held it for like five minutes, so <laughs> and then I just gave it back. So your medals as well. Uh, did how long did all you, uh, wear your medals around your nets for, and did you sleep with it? And then the second part of that question: uh, Did you bite on your medal? And if so, was it pure gold at the time? Obviously not now, but at the time. I definitely wore my. I put my second like league. I I put the league medal on when we went back to the, like one of the, all the Kemp's place. So when we had a celebration after the cup back in sale and I had both those medals on and I definitely wore them all the next day. But apart from that, <laughs> um, but I didn't buy it, no. <laughs> I um, I wore mine after the celebrate, after the um, presentation and then all the way home, which is a, a fairly long drive. And it has it's it's taken its pride and place in the in the uh, the cabinet. I probably wore mine until I went home. I guess uh, we stayed at the soccer like all night. So yeah, it was probably until I went to sleep. Yeah, but I um, didn't I didn't bite it. So. <laughs> Sally, did you also win the leap um, golden boot? Uh yeah. How's what does that mean to you in a premiership year? 
you know, first year at sale um, and you won the golden boot. What does that mean to you? Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I mean, it was definitely like, a, it was not all me. It was definitely like the team. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it was really nice to get. Um, I definitely wasn't expecting to get it. And, you know, um, but it is nice. It is nice to get um, some personal awards um, as well as the team. But, yeah, um, I was pretty happy. Zoe and Romy, you've been part of three Brand Hoser Cups and two league um, titles. Which one of those, and I asked this to the others on Sunday, I'm going to ask the same question to both of you. Which one of those means a little bit more than the others? I was going to say, I was only part of the, I was only part of two Brown Husier Cups last year and this year. Um, But last year you asked us what was better, what was it better to whip, like to win the league or the, Brown Husier Cup, and we all said the league at that stage, but 100% it was the Brown Husier Cup this year. Like, just that rivalry that Sale has uh, very much so come up against with Petuna um, and the way in which we won it, like you were saying before, being 2-0 down at half time, then still trailing 2-1 uh, with seven minutes to go and then, yeah, scoring the last goal, Sally scoring the last goal with two minutes remaining in the game. Like, that's insane. And I think that Romney said at halftime and Romney's speech at halftime was amazing. You know, he said oh, that yes. that it, it was just, you know, he really, really encouraged us to to dig, to dig deep with everything that we had and that it would take everyone to do that. And I think that we it was a wake up call in a way coming away to not half time and then it was a perfect perfect combination with Romy um and what he said and how he he encouraged us you know we didn't get our asses kicked but at the same time we knew we weren't in the good books by all <laughs> by any standards but we also will we left inspired and left wanting to wanting to do better and and we did we came out so much better in that second half and at the end of the day, there is no better way to beat your rival than come back and beat him 3-2 after being 2-0 down at halftime. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a really it's a hard question to answer, Will. I think they're all special in their own way. I think what makes this year so much, probably in my opinion, probably a bit more profound in, in weight is the fact that the girls were the hunted all mm. year. Every team wanted to knock off. They wanted it. They'd been up the top for such a long time. There was teams coming at them physically, you know, what in whatever capacity to try and win. And the fact to go and defend the league and the league cup and do it in the circumstances and the conditions that that were and all the challenges that get set to, you know, Zoe getting injured. Sally spent a fair. Sally might have got a heap more goals if she didn't get injured during a year there was a lot of circumstances that we also had to get through so I feel like this year's combination of the two is probably the most significant from a weight perspective I mean the first one was awesome to break the duck for the for the club and to put the senior girls on the map but this one was probably the one that I think is hardest to win because it was the hunted everyone was sort of coming at the girls and yeah I thought they did an amazing job to to defend it but also to to grow and bring in different girls into the thing, but still pass on the values. And I think no matter what happens going forward, there's a benchmark now of expectations and stuff. And it's really, the team's in a really good place from that perspective. So I'm going to ask you the next two questions because Romy and Zoe have already answered this the last two times I've been down at sale. Um, so what does the sport of the world game mean to you and now being part of Sale United? It's just... Soccer's, it's just a chance for me to just not focus on anything else. And I just go to have fun. And just like, like, um, and yeah, it def it means a lot. It just, I enjoy it so like so much. And 
yeah, it's just a great way for me to not have to worry about anything else for those that those 90 minutes and even the trainings, the trainings are, oh, like I love going to training because it just, yeah, I, it's the thing I love and I love spending time like with the people on the team, all the coaches and and the players. Yeah, it's just, it's really great. Um, and sale, yeah, no, sale, it's, it's really good. Um, even though it is the, uh, it's only 45 minutes, um, but I, I sleep most of the way, so really it's not that big of a deal. Um, and yes, <laughs> so is yeah, it's just really great. It's honestly like the best thing that's happened in like the last year. Like last year I was kind of not losing interest in the sport, but I was just kind of in a bit of a place where I didn't know what to do and I was going to pick up another sport um, instead. Um um, but then I just, yeah, messaged Maddie and it just sort of, yeah, went from there. And I'm, I'm really glad I reached out because this year has been the best. Um, so, yeah, I really, I just love soccer. Now, you mentioned, obviously, you travel 45 minutes. Obviously, that's one way uh, to and from uh, training. Um, tell us about, you know, how important your commitment to coming down to training on a weeknight, on a school night in particular. And obviously um, on game day, obviously you have to go a bit further in some of those games as well. Uh, how important is that commitment for you just, um, and throughout this season? And um, I think the commitment is, yeah, it's really important because um, the trainings, you know, you go to trainings to get better and get better as a team. So I think going to both trainings really benefits um, like all the players and yeah, it's just, it's what's needed. Like, and obviously mum's okay to do it. So it's, um, yeah, it's really, I think it is important um, to have that commitment, but yeah, it's also needed, I suppose, mm. to do better in the, in the game, so sort of have to have it. For you, Romy and Zoe, how special have Sally making that commitment for, um, an hour and a half, either uh, both ways, um, from Bansdale to sail for training, obviously further away to get to your games? Uh, it, it makes it like, it makes training from a coach's perspective so much better when you have all your players there or as many as your players, but it's also, it helps solidify the message that if Sally can come from that far when it's wet, cold, miserable and whatever, that everyone should be getting to training. So it sets a, it sets a higher benchmark. It ha has higher expectations of players. And I think that commitment just flows down to people realizing. And when you've got such a large number of players in our squad, which was is a blessing, but also a challenge as well, it just means that when you can sit back and, and have competition, healthy competition to try and make people in their spots and keep everyone honest from that perspective. So it's it's great that Sally could be one of the ones that set that help set that expectation and and led by example. I guess my before I say my answer to this is no in no means of taking away from the amazing commitment that Sally has put in while being at sale this year and um you know that that is a huge commitment on her behalf and her mum's behalf but everyone in our team has like made a commitment and you know some more so than others I mean Romy again like driving from Dargo um to come same thing same like that you know he doesn't have daughters that play on the team he doesn't you know he he does it voluntarily and Romy has made an incredible difference like I genuinely don't think we would have won the league without Romy's help nor do I think we would have won the league without Sally either um and it's just been that perfect combination of commitment from everyone. I mean, there's some girls in our team that are going through some real shit this season. You know, there's girls that, you know, 
have kids and their kids have been sick and they've had partners away and so juggling that I mean myself with working away a lot more this you know having a new job and working away um and factoring that into into play um and then you've also got um the the commitment of our partners and our families and you know parents and siblings as well they've been incredible as well I mean you would have heard them in the crowd when Sally scored that goal, that last goal to win us that game, and it was insane. It was deafening. So I think that the uh, the commitment from everyone, players, coaches, and supporters, as has been a massive, massive um, contributor or contributing factor into into our performance as a whole this season. And it's been amazing. And you know, commitment's not always. Uh, easy it, you know that you know commitment can be challenging but we collectively have you know done what we've been able to do and commit what we've been able to commit and it and it's paid off okay. now I'm going to finish with some lighthearted questions I know we've gone a little bit over time hard one who had the most embarrassing moment on the field uh this past season and what was it it's probably me breaking my wrist at like that's really embarrassing. <laughs> uh, you didn't wail when you fell through everyone <laughs> and had to get stretched off through the crowd <laughs> at that Falcons home game. That was embarrassing. But that was off ship, so. I can't think of I can't, nothing's jumping out. Uh, injuries are injuries. I don't think they're embarrassing. I think they just they're just part of the, the game, I think. But I can't think of anything that stands out where I went. That's that's a faux pas. Um I mean, oh, no, it's not really embarrassing. I was kind of, I was going to say, like, Abby scoring her first uh, goal with her boob. (laughs) (laughs) That was embarrassing. It kind of, it worked, so. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, no, that's, that was, that was one, one accolade that probably befits that, yeah. (laughs) Oh, they didn't mention that one. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. I can't think of any, like, yeah. Oh, no, maybe maybe one person, we shall be nameless, forgetting what day we played and rocking up, getting, <laughs> having a talk. Oh, so yeah, 100%. No. Rather than the Sunday and missing half a game in a clutch match against maybe the opponent in the grand final that we beat. <laughs> that yeah. was a big difference. So I think that was probably a personal embarrassing one. It was probably... I think the fact that we all reminded her again just before the grand, the grand final, what day it was and the time, and I think it was it was might have been said in jest, but there was definitely an element of you, you're sure you're right, you know what time it is and whatever. So I think that's probably if I was to sit back and say it, that's probably the one that stands out the most. Uh, who's the comedian, the best singer, the best dance on the team? I feel like we get there's like different people that can be comedians at different times. Like Abby's hilarious. Daniil's hilarious. Like even Chelsea Page can be like really funny in her own little mm-hmm. way. Like um, Laurel is hilarious, but she doesn't know that she's being hilarious. Um, <laughs> and the other two, I don't know. Maddie would Maddie Breakspear would definitely be the worst dancer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she has one dance move, and that's it. <laughs> okay. I don't. I don't think this other coach is sitting here in the background laughing has probably portrayed any of those attributes anywhere. So, and that shall say that that way. <laughs> do any of you? Have, do either of you have a pre-game superstition or ritual? Ritual would just be covering my body in deep heat and neurofin gel. <laughs> my knees in neurofin gel. <laughs> No, I don't have any rituals. I... Um, and okay, two-part question to finish. Um, the first part is, how special is it to win a premiership in the club's 50th year? Which I think, Rami, you mentioned it um, at right, uh, like right at the start of this interview. Oh, it's, 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 it's actually, it's probably hard to put into words. Um, I've been involved with the club for more years than I want to make, make credit for, but Sadly, it's it's always the club's on-field performances from a trophy perspective have never, ever echoed 
the off-field performances and what they do and how much volunteer work and the exceptional work. And I know there's some recognition now with, you know, Club of the Year and all sorts of stuff that the club's had. But to see the club achieve in the senior ranks a team that's sort of just had a, an amazing run, it's just such a great thing. And it's awesome, without sounding terrible, it's awesome that we've been able to build the, the, the female sort of participation in the club. And this has been a really awesome sort of thing. And to become, to give you some perspective, once upon a time was we were playing the Sale Girls and the amount of times that I hear the op opponents now call the sale, the Swanettes was a, a sort of an, in, an in-house sort of name that we had obviously been the Swans with the emblem and the Swanettes becoming the, the female side. To hear some other teams now mentioned, you know, you took it up to the Swanettes. You've had, you, it, it's great that there's it's sort of like, it feels like not, not only has it put it on the map in sale, um, it's great for the club, but it's also other teams now understand that you know, there's one, well, hopefully there's more success in the senior ranks, but this has certainly been a, it's been um, one out of the box to have five trophies in three years is, is just yeah, crazy and to double it up and do it in the 50th year. I, I think I think I might have said it after the game that this, at the moment, statistically speaking, this bunch of girls is probably the most decorated result-wise team that the club's had in the 50 years. And um, I guess the challenge is back out to the men's now to level up and hopefully they can start to bring home the, the silverware as well. Like I said, I haven't really been at sale for long, but it's definitely nice to see like how much effort goes in um, into how the club works and you know, everyone's efforts are always like appreciated. Like, And yeah, it's just nice to... Um, Nice to win, uh, just to top it off. Obviously, um, 50 years is a long time, so it's it's nice to end it on a high, I suppose. I think that it was special in the sense that last year when we were presented the cup at home after the Falcons game um, and we had our celebration this time with our champagne and um, our streamers and it was amazing. And these two ladies um, whose names escape me, but Romy will be able to tell you what their names were. Yep. Well, that now, Sheena and Janice. Yep. Sheena and Janice. And something really stuck with me that the, the ladies said when they were um, just about to present us the cup and it was the fact that, they were around, correct me if I'm wrong again, Romy, that they were around at the start of the um, starter sale United. So they were, you know, within the founding committee. Um, and at that time, they never, ever thought that Sal would ever have a girls team, ever. Not in a million years would they have a women's team. And so I think to go back to back and then, you know, a three-peat in the, in the cup, is just an, a great way to celebrate how far sale has come in those 50 years and a way to almost recognise everyone that has made that happen. I mean, you look at Maddie and Romy and they have been, both of them, trailblazers, not just in the club in terms of women's football, but also in the region. I mean, they mm -hmm. took the under-18 LVSL girls to... Um, the grand final last year at the champ, like country champs, and they won. Then they went to the grand finals again this year. Like Romy grab had a team of young girls and was the only sale team that he took them up. And those girls ended up playing in our senior women's team. That when we actually started to become a competitive club in the women's league, so that's incredible. And as I said, Maddie has been there as well and has been working not just within sale but in that wider LVSL region in terms of football uh, or like female football promotion and coaching and also really fighting to be recognised. And, yeah, I think that being able to do that in the 50 years, it's a it's a compliment to Romy and Maddie and every other person within sale that has worked so hard to not only get a women's team together but then also promote a women's team, but also keep a club afloat and around a, a so that we can have that opportunity to play and win. All three, thank you so much for getting up so many time to join us. It's awesome entering the 
you know, the three most important ones other than obviously the ones I interviewed on Sunday. Um, but it is awesome to have all three on the show and uh, congratulations on winning the Premiership, uh, and especially defending it, uh, both the league and also the Cup uh, is an unbelievable effort. And um, I'm so proud of this amazing team. And um, and uh, hopefully next year you can back it up again and uh, hopefully make it a three-peat <laughs> in the league and four in a row uh, in the Brown Hoser Cup. Hopefully not not that close. <laughs> Thanks, Will. We look forward to Thanks, having a conversation with you then. Thanks, Will. <laughs> no worries. And that's our Romy, Zoe, and Sally. They're joining us from the Cell United uh, Football Club because uh, um, we'll put all the details up on uh, how you can get involved with the best uh, team out there in Gippsland and Latrobe Valley region. There's more on the Smash Sports Show right after this. Don't go away here on the 10th year celebration.